is that feeling you get when you're extremely broke, especially when you can't buy that thing that you so desire? Why is it that in our society today, even the rich suffer from high levels of depression and unhappiness? All this will be answered on today's episode of Catholic Faith Forum. I'm your host, Stephanie Ezonye, and today we'll be talking on the topic, Can Money Buy Happiness? Joining me today are two very special guests, a lawyer and a public figure. So don't go anywhere, because right after this break, we'll be meeting them. Stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. This is Catholic Faith Forum. I'm your host, Stephanie Ezonye. So joining me today to talk on the topic, Can Money Buy Happiness?, are two very special guests. By name, Mrs. Roma Wayo and Kelechi Amadiobi. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thank Thank you so, so much. It's really nice to have you. All right, so Kelechi Amadiobi is a Nigerian creative photographer, painter, artist, and the publisher of Mania magazine. His works in photography and visual art has earned him international renown featuring in many international exhibitions. It's good to have you. Thank you. All right. So Mrs. Romawayo is a lawyer of over 20 years post-call, particularly specialized in litigation and various areas of corporate law practice. She is a devoted Catholic and is also happily married and blessed with three incredible teenagers. It's very nice to have you, Ma. It's a pleasure. Honestly, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, thank you so much. So I have to say, how are you doing generally? Oh, well, what can I say? You know, it's a beautiful world. Thank Thank God for good health. Yeah, and I have to say, I'm finally here to tell you that I like your hair. (laughs) Like your hair, anytime I'm seeing it, like, gosh. Honestly, thank you so much. And Mr. Roma, you're always looking younger by the day, I have to say. Thank you. Since I was in uni up to now, like, you're always looking stunning. Well, thank, thank you so I'm much. blushing right now. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so let's get right, right into, into it. it. Yeah. So what does happiness mean to you? Well, I, would, I, I was trying to find a definition of happiness a few minutes ago, and I would say is that feeling of well-being. Um, a lot of times that comes as a result of some expectation being met, you know. Yeah. Um, yes, but I, I do think that happiness is much wider than that but that that's me you know just well-being yeah How? taking taking a trying to define it in one way or the other some say oh contentment but i say contentment is it's, it's part of happiness but yeah. not all of it but general well-being is yes. your happiness yes Thank a you. feeling that of, feeling of well-being all yes right. mr Roma, what do you think well for me i feel it um being satisfied with um what you have more like contentment Yes, for me, it tends more towards being content, you know, with what yeah. you have. And um, it is a thing that you make by yourself. It is a, it is a state of mind, you know. You do it by yourself. It, it is you that determines. So no one controls your... Exactly. It's, it's not what makes a, a one person happy isn't necessarily what will make the next person happy. So that is why sometimes you see people that are actually, you think are poor... And you see them laughing away Honestly. and having a nice time. And then you see people that have made so much money and then you hear they're going to kill themselves. Honestly. You know, so you wonder, so, so what is this? It seems as if it keeps shifting based yeah. on how you feel about yourself. Honestly, so now you've said this, it reminds me. So how does money affect one's happiness? What do you think? Well, you see, for some people, what makes them happy sometimes might be um, giving to others, charity. Do you understand? And so when they have money and the feeling of being able to touch other people's lives, okay. you know, when they give, will make them happy. Make them happy. Do you understand? Yeah. There are people that for them, um, it is to be able to outdo the next person. Oh, you know? So when so they have money, person. there they go competing here and there and it gives them a certain level of joy. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. But in the end, for such people, it's as if, this happiness continues to shift as they achieve those yes. things, you know, that, that um, in the end they're not necessarily happy at the end of it. Yeah. Do you understand? So it is very much a state of mind. It is a decision you make. 
You decide for yourself what makes you happy. And then, well, if you have money, you can, you notice that they channel the, 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 the use of the money towards those things. Those things. You know? So yeah. that's, that's where, it, where it is for me. Oh, yes, money is not a yes or no answer. <laughs> yes. yes, it can buy you, happiness. you know, happiness. No, it can't. But then it, it can also buy you pain. I understand. So, Kelechi Amadjobi, I believe as a public figure, you've gotten a substantial amount of wealth. <laughs> it's only <laughs> you that can tell our viewers, how does it feel to be rich? Does it actually make you fully happy? Well, you know, the truth is, I, I, sometimes I like to make a distinction okay. between happiness and joy. Okay. Happiness, for me, is predicated on an outcome. Okay. You know, you, you eat something and you enjoy it and you're happy. You, you, you have money, you buy something and, and you're, you're happy. happy. You know, you've or you, you take an exam, you pass it. You're Somehow, happy. there's always some kind of external factor yeah. that becomes responsible for your, uh, you finding that sense of well-being. Um, I like to look for joy. Joy for me is a state of mind, which I think is what she's trying to describe, where you will say, I put myself in this state of mind so that the process through which I even make money brings yeah. me joy. So yeah. it's not predicated on the result of what you're doing, which a lot of times you don't have control over. But it is a state of mind through which you are living in the present. So you say, oh, I find joy in making photographs. I find joy in dancing. I don't, I'm not really interested in whether people like the photograph or if it's oh, sold or somebody commissioned me or somebody pays me for it. Now, that is a distinction I like to make. In terms of money, now, I, I like to categorize it. Yes, it can buy you comfort. Um, happiness is a different thing. It can buy you comfort. It can buy you some comfort. Happiness is yes. different. Now, um, when you say contented, contentment in itself is uh, a function of different levels of perception and yeah. expectation. Again, you know, mm -hmm. you're contented with your nice hut in the village, with a nice fireplace, mm -hmm. and you go out to hunt mm -hmm. for... With extra added hamatan. Yes, with hamatan, you're enjoying the two windows that cross through, and the person looks at it and says, my grandpa lived in this kind of house, I am contented. He's not looking for TV, he's not looking for a car, he doesn't even want a bicycle. It's based on his expectation, and yeah. he becomes contented. Another person says, look, you know, um, my folks lived in Banana Island, and um, I'm contented uh, living in Ikoi. Okay. You know, I mean, I think I don't want more. I don't want a private jet. I'm good with this, my, you know, five-bedroom flat, you know, and a, a Ferrari parked in the garage. It is yeah. his perception. You understand? So yeah. it's now when you say contentment, it starts to vary. But I say, at a certain level of need, you need money to get away from the stress of the basics, food, clothing, shelter. shelter. You know, some people would add education to that. You know, if you're struggling with those things, you, you may also be struggling with ill health in terms of not being able to eat yeah. Good, food, Good food, you know, to be able to nurture your body to continue in this journey of happiness. You understand? understand? So when you say, oh, look, you know, money cannot buy you happiness, the person will say, give me the money first. <laughs> and then, and then, and then let, us first. Let, let us decide, let us decide whether happy. happiness will come. We'll come. Yeah. But I, I used to, let me make this short, I used to have a time when I would be thinking about this issue. Then I would... I'm a very imaginative person. Honestly, you're uh, sorry to <laughs> you I'm just enjoying it so much. I'm so, <laughs> guys, we need to go on a short break. Let's All go right. and meet who the saints of the week is. Stay tuned. All right. <laughs> Our saint of this week is Saint Augustine of Canterbury. At the end of the sixth century. Anyone would have said that Augustine had found his niche in life. Looking at this respected prior of a monastery, 
almost anyone would have predicted he would spend his last days there, instructing, governing, and settling even further into this sedentary life. But Pope St. Gregory the Great had lived under Augustine's rule in that same monastery when he decided it was time to send missionaries to Anglo-Saxon England, he didn't choose those with restless natures or the young, looking for new words to conquer. He chose Augustine and 30 monks to make the unexpected and dangerous trip to England. Missionaries had gone to Britain years before, but Saxon conquest of England had forced these Christians into hiding. Augustine and his monks were to bring these Christians back into the fold and convince the warlike conquerors to become Christians themselves. Every step of the way, they heard the horrid stories of the cruelty and barbarity of their future hosts. By the time they had reached France, the stories became so frightening that the monks turned back to Rome. Gregory had heard encouraging news that England was far more ready for Christianity than the stories would indicate including the marriage of King Elthabelt of Kent to a Christian princess, Betha. He sent Augustine and the monks on their way again, fortified with his belief that now was the time for evangelization. King Elthabelt himself wasn't as sure, but he was just a king and curious. So he went to hear what the missionaries had to say after they landed in England. But he was just as afraid of them as they were of him. Fearful that they would use magic on them, he held the meeting in the open air. There he listened to what they had to say about Christianity. He did not convert them, but was impressed enough to let them continue to preach as long as they didn't force anyone to convert. They didn't have to. The king was baptized in year 597. Unlike other kings who forced all subjects to be baptized as soon as they were converted, Ethelbert left religious a free choice. Nonetheless, the following year, many of his subjects were baptized. Augustine was consecrated Bishop of the English, and more missionaries arrived from Rome to help with the new task. Augustine had to be very careful because although the English had embraced the new religion, they still respected the old. Under the wise orders of Gregory the Great, Augustine aided the growth from the ancient traditions to the new life by consecrating pagan temples for Christian worship and turning pagan festivals into feast days of martyrs. Canterbury was built on the site of an ancient church. Augustine was more successful with the pagans than with the Christians. He found the ancient British church, which had been driven into Cornwall and Wales and had strayed a little in its practices from Rome. He met with them several times to try to bring them back to the Roman church, but the old church could not forgive their conquerors and chose isolation and bitterness over community and reconciliation. Augustine was only in England for eight years before he died in 605. His feast day is celebrated on May 26 in England and May 28 elsewhere. He is also known as Austin, a name that many locations have adopted. St. Augustine of Canterbury, pray for us. Welcome back, guys. This is Catholic Faith Forum. Joining me today are two special guests, Kelechi Amadiobi and Barrister Roma Wayu. So, <laughs> Kelechi Amadiobi, we've been talking about making money, happiness, happiness was generated. So, you were talking about how you felt earlier. So, can you go back to Yeah, it? the thing is this. You know, I do believe that at a certain level, you would need money to just take care of your basics. After that, then we can start talking about being contented. If you've taken care of your basics, you then, the question is, what do you crave? I remember when I was younger, I thought that if I bought this three CD changer, I know a lot of you are too young <laughs> to know oh, about CD, CD changer. changer. If you put, you put <laughs> CDs in this thing, it would bring out a tray with three CDs. They will rotate mm. like this, and then you can choose your song, and it will rotate back inside and play um, the music. I carry all those kind of things, and I thought that if I had this, <laughs> too young to I will surely be happy <laughs> in this my life. You understand? Yes. So I gathered all my money and bought one and pressed that button, and it came out with the mm. CDs revolved. I said, wow. I'm good right now. <laughs> I played it a little bit 
after a week, after two weeks, I was wondering, why was I so excited about <laughs> this? It's, it's exactly the same feeling with a child. You buy a new toy for them, they will think, oh, dad, if you don't buy this bicycle for me, I happy. will commit suicide. Mm-hmm. I'll be depressed. Life will be end as I know it. Mm-hmm. And the father buys the bicycle. He would ride it for a few Sometimes months. You get tired. After a while, you be asking, aren't you going to ride bicycle? to say, no, daddy, I'm tired. <laughs> tired. <laughs> I don't think I'll ride bicycle. They say, you are going to die. Yeah. So that well-being that you felt at the beginning of it will keep decreasing. So when people uh, depend on Mm -hmm. those external physical things, they will always get disappointed because eventually you'll find a better one. You find a bigger house. You think you've just bought a boat, you say, and I'm a boat owner. You see Dangote's yacht. Honestly. And then you go and buy it. And then you find out that somebody owns a ship, personal ship, you like, yeah. oh, no, this is terrible. You have a private jet. Okay, yeah. you're enjoying yourself. You're one of the private jet owners. Somebody has a Boeing 727 that he, he retrofitted with a swimming pool. That you yeah. be. So there will always be something, somebody stronger, somebody better than you. Better than you. And so. how I also, like, I, used to, I, was, I was trying to tell a story about this hypothetical situation. What if you, just anybody, random chap, wins a lottery, but an insane lottery, so okay. much money lottery. Not just normal. Something out of this world. Okay? Mad. You have never handled, let's say, 100 million naira as a human being. And then you win a lottery for $2 trillion. Wow. It's difficult to imagine. It's an, yeah, astro- it's an astronomical number. And they give you this money. You've been struggling to survive. Yes. So if I have money, I will now be happy, right? Now, imagine what that money would entail in that person's life. When I started looking at all the problems that that money will bring, when I started calculating, the implication, first of all, of having a a trillion dollars is that all the owners of banks in Nigeria... Will start suspecting you? No, they will all line up at your house just to greet you. (laughs) Just The owners of all the banks. (laughs) Because with a trillion (laughs) dollars, you can buy any bank. Mm -hmm. You can decide who will become the next president. Wow. You become a problem for the gubernatorial candidate of your state if you do not support his party. And all your relations will have to have armed police escort so that they will not be kidnapped. kidnapped yeah. Honestly, which are in disguise <laughs> problems, actually? No, these are issues you're going to start facing. Honestly. You may just find yourself asking, a lot of money, is it really a good thing? I don't know if you understand. I understand you. Instantly, that money becomes a source of a problem, misery. Issue. So money itself can be a source of misery, depending on the quantities and your ability to handle it. I understand. So, Barrister Roma, why are you? Please, can you tell us what role God has to play in our everyday happiness? Well, um, that's a very interesting question. And then considering the topic, I hope you're not... Um, uh, you're talking about money and then happiness. And then yeah. you're asking, no. oh God, of course. So. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's the ultimate of it all. You know, you don't need money to assess God. And um, if you think that, um, I'm just looking at the topic, you know, if you think that money will buy you happiness, then you've missed it if you don't have God. Honestly. At the top of your chart. Word. Do you understand? The important thing for you most of the time is to, you must have a focus. Okay. Money is just a tool. And, um, and the ultimate happiness is to be able to have a relationship with God. Wow. Because, you see, when you wake up every day and you think, oh, what am I going to do today? I, I don't know whether you've noticed it, that when you finish all that plan and you, 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 you end up doing all of those things mm-hmm. you listed for the day, and then you come back home, and you don't have God at the end of it all. You notice that you don't come back very satisfied. Yeah, something's missing. You, you always feel there's something missing. But if you had started that day and made your plan and said, okay, hand it over to God and say, I give you all of my plan for today. Um, I can bet you that when you conclude at the end of the day, you will come back and say, thank you a lot for what you have done. Yeah. Now, but when you step out and you don't have God in your, in, your, in your heart at the time you stepped out, when you come out, when you get home at the end of it all, you, you come back to say, ah, so what am I going to do tomorrow? Yeah, so today is done. So, so today is done. I've done it. It's dusted. Done. So do you what's next? So that, that is it. The ultimate happiness of it all is when you are in tandem 
with the relationship that you're supposed to have with God. Do you understand? understand so that, that is where I see it. it. It may be Christianity, it may be Islam, it can be anything. But once you are connected with your creator, that's awesome. That's, that's, that's all. That's the ultimate. Thank so you so much for that. So that's the ultimate for me. That's... Thank you so much for that. All right, guys, I've learned so much in such a short time. All right, let's find out what the Know Your Faith crew has in store for us. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Know Your Faith series. I am Jeffrey. And today we will be looking at some Catholic symbols. Symbols have been important in every human culture and religious system from earliest times. They convey meanings by what they represent and they point beyond their own existence. Catholic symbols help us to deepen our faith and shape our prayer. They bridge the material and spiritual worlds and reveal truths about God. Some common Catholic symbols are the crucifix, the Alpha and Omega, the pelican, the sacred heart, the IHS and Cairo, the fish, the peacock and the tree of life, the dove, the crossed keys, and the lamb. On this episode, we shall discuss just a few. Firstly, the crucifix. It is the most common symbol of the Christian faith. The crucifix is a symbol of sacrifice and atonement. It usually has the letters INRI carved into the wood of the cross. These letters are short for the Latin phrase, Jesus Nazarenus Rex Ludorum, which translates to Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Second, the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. These two letters symbolize the fact that Christ is the beginning and the end of all creation. Three, the dove. The dove is a white bird often depicted as flying gracefully before a shining aura of light. The dove is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. It also symbolizes God's grace. Four, the peacock and the tree of life. The early church adopted this symbol to represent the Christian belief in eternal life in heaven with God. The peacock was often depicted next to the tree of life. The tree of life is both an actual tree in Eden and a newly restored tree in heaven. 5. The pelican. Medieval Europeans noticed that pelicans were particularly attentive to their young. In a time of food shortage, pelicans would pierce their breasts with their beak in order to feed their young with their blood. How amazing is that? The pelican then became a symbol of Christ's passion and death for the sins of the children of God. Jesus shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. We are washed in his blood at baptism and we receive it as spiritual food in the Eucharist. So in summary, Catholic symbols help us to deepen our faith and shape our prayer life. They bridge the material and spiritual world and reveal truths about God. Examples of them are the crucifix, the alpha and omega, the pelican, the peacock and the tree of life, and so on. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Which of the symbols above is new to you? Let us know in the comments. Till next time when I bring you another wonderful episode. Be bold and be Catholic. Welcome back, guys. This is Catholic Faith Forum. Thank you so much, Know Your Faith Crew, for that awesome topic. So, so who do I ask this question now? Okay, Kelly Chiamajubi. So what do you have to say about people that indulge in immoral and illegal acts just for money? Well, the, the thing I say is this. They are searching for an illusion. They are searching for happiness. It's like searching for happiness, and the happiness is Oju Elegba. But in the process of trying to get to a jail bar, you sent a mortar to destroy a jail bar. So when you eventually arrive there, you will see just rubble. 
Wow. Because the act through which you tried to get where you're going to has already destroyed the essence of what you're looking for. So the criminals, the people who are doing all these engage in all these activities to get money. They're trying to get money so that they will get recognition. They will get respect. They will get um, contentment. But what is happening to them is that, you know, by the time they finish getting the money, they're watching their back. It is now completely countered by the fear of getting caught, yeah. the fear of getting found out. Fear of EFCC. So at either. the end of the day, you're, you're, you're faced with this double-faced situation where you're pretending to be what you are not. Inside you, you know you're a criminal, but you're trying to wash it. You're trying to find ways to get away from it. You're running away from yourself, even though the process to which you got there, you mm-hmm. know, is false. And you're always afraid. And again, um, coming back to what she said, that is where then God comes in. Oh, yes, that sir. being afraid and that fear and that whole trying, it's, it's with, with God, then you have a conscience. Then you will not even attempt, attempt to do those way. things. And then you have true happiness, you know. So for me, I, I believe that people going into crime and they're chasing an illusion that they have destroyed already through their illegal acts. Wow. 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 <laughs> Honestly, this is just so sweet. This is just interesting. All right, Barrister Roma, how are you? So what would you tell us, are other, what would you say are other sources of happiness? We've mentioned God as a major source of happiness. What other things would you advise people to do in order to, you know, feel happy? Well, you have to, the basic thing is for you to understand what makes you happy. Okay. You, know, you have to find it out by understand yourself. Understand yourself first. You understand, it's, it's, know yourself. Who am I? I, I, would, I would like to use I would like to use Kelechi at this point. Hmm? Um, when we were growing up, he had always had art in his heart. You know, from primary school, he always painted. He always drew. You know, and um, he was oh, he was always oh the best gift you could give him was maybe a pencil or a brush, and that was the only thing that. He, you know, we kept on wondering what it was all about. But we used to enjoy the things that he, he did with the little things he got, yeah. you know. But um, our daddy didn't like that. Our daddy didn't want him to be an artist. And so he, he always um, discouraged art. But he continued, you know. Yeah. And then each time, um, uh, if there's a sunset, we would run and chase the spot. And then he would set his easel. And then he would begin to make the painting. You know, then he didn't have a camera. We were very young then. Yeah. When he finally got the camera, he started capturing all those scenes in order wow. to... So you see, from the beginning, he knew what made him happy. And that was painting. Yeah. Now, it's important for each of us to understand that what makes us happy. Sometimes, for some people, it's when you see a smile on the next person's face, that's when you realize that you're a joy giver. You want people to be happy. You know, there yeah. are people that know how to comfort others with their words. And you hear that, oh, later they become uh, uh, into spoken words, you know. So it's important for you to know what really makes you happy. It could be, it could be in your DNA. It could be in what you have seen happen to other people, yeah. you know, in the course of your life. You yeah. know, you could have, you would find that what that is. So go after it. Go after so it. what you can do with money should be the tool that will take you there. Do you understand? Not necessarily the money itself. It is, yeah. you know, the, it is a, it, do it's a journey. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yes. So it's what you do with the money that will take you there. So find out what you like. Yeah. What I like can be so different from what every other person likes. So find yeah. it and go for it. So it's not, it's not easy for me to say, oh, everybody should like dancing. Yeah. There, are people that, there are people that don't like to dance. So find, you have to, it's, it's something that you have to find out for yourself and then um, and then you pursue it. Not, sure. And make sure it's not something negative. Don't say, I, I, I love to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very good assassin, so I would like to, <laughs> I would like to invest like in to torment people. Torment people. Mm. Remember that this world is for all of us. We're here to make it better for others yes. and to keep it for the next generation. So we're not here to, to destroy it for our own enjoyment. Do you understand? Yes. So, and interestingly, all of this you find it in, in, in our faith, in the Catholic faith. You see it there. That is what the teaching is about. How you can 
you can live in a way that you will be able to help others to also, you know, yeah. live your true lives. Live their true life. Do you understand? So it is a, a very personal thing for you to find out that thing that gives you joy. It can drop into your life at a certain stage in your life. You may find it early like he did. Yeah. You may find it as late. You may find it. Yes, some people Probably say, when you finish university, there are some people, people like that, me. Um, that, that, that <laughs> discovered their joy at the age of 50. Yeah. There are some that discovered the age of 30. Never don't yeah. give up. Yeah. You will finally find out what it is. That gives you so what, what education does, it, it exposes you to so many things. So that maybe somewhere in it, you will finally find, find that thing. That thing that you understand? You and then you, you invest in Honestly, it. Honestly, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. We've learned so much. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So that's it. We've come to the end of the show. Hope you guys learned something because I've learned a lot. So guys, you've learned that. See, money cannot really buy happiness. Happiness is more than just money. It depends on your relationship with God. Money is just a tool. So keep that in mind next time. All right, guys, we've come to the end of today's episode. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to drop a comment, a contrary opinion, or even a question on the comment section. Subscribe to us if you've not yet subscribed. And do not forget to follow us on our social media platform at CFF on TV. So until next time, guys, keep, keep it safe in jeans and, and shirts. shirts. Goodbye. <laughs>